And as we heard in the news, lawyers representing some of the victims of contaminated NHS blood products say the only recommendation of an inquiry into the disaster still hasn't been implemented. A year ago, the Penrose inquiry into how the blood supply became contaminated in the 1970s, 80s and 90s recommended that the NHS do more to trace those who still don't know they were infected. The Scottish Government says good progress is being made. Our health correspondent, Eleanor Bradford, reports. Hi, hi, nice to meet you. Come have a seat. Paul met me in his lawyer's office. He wants his identity hidden. He's just been diagnosed with hepatitis C. He now knows it's been in his system since May 1991, when he had a blood transfusion, just before screening came in. Hepatitis C comes with a stig stigma. I mean, I'm actually out of work at the moment because of it. Because I can't work. I just physically can't work. I've no got the energy. And the sickness every day is... Just take that away for a day and I'll feel pretty good. But it's just I had everything in life. Now I've got to rely on the government to help you live and it's, it's not a lot. A year ago, the £12 million Penrose inquiry into contaminated blood came to just one conclusion, that a look-back exercise should take place to trace people at risk. That could be anyone who had a blood transfusion before September 1991. Hi, Lindsay speaking. Thompson solicitors represent many of those who know they were infected, but senior solicitor Lindsay Bruce says new cases, like Paul, are still coming forward. We've got, we've got several going forward, um, all, all from accidents and being blood transfusions. So it seems kind of crazy, doesn't it, that, that you as a firm of solicitors have found three cases, mm -hmm. and yet, as far as you know, the NHS hasn't proactively done anything. No, not to my knowledge, they've not done anything proactive. Certainly the feedback from the clients is that they feel out in the limb. Last week, the Scottish Government led the UK in announcing increased support payments for the victims of the disaster. Health Secretary Shona Robertson says the Scottish Government is also leading the way in a look-back exercise, with statistical modelling underway and a review group which is due to come up with a plan in the summer. There have been attempts in the past to, to try and trace people and get people to come forward, uh, but uh, Professor Goldberg is looking at what more we can do uh, to meet that recommendation from Penrose. However, hepatitis C causes more damage the longer it's undiagnosed. The virus has been in Paul's body so long he has cirrhosis of the liver. He says higher support payments mean nothing. I don't think there's ever any enough money if they don't cure you. I just wouldn't tell anybody. Just, but you no, know, people are asking questions. You no, know, why you not what? <laughs> just got to tell lies. Paul's been offered no counselling. He's got to wait at least two months to see a specialist. He says his lawyer has given him more information about hepatitis C than the NHS. How many other Pauls are out there is still unclear. It could be as many as 200 who don't yet know they're the last victims of the worst disaster the NHS has ever known. That's our health correspondent, Eleanor Bradford, and we'll have more on that story later in the programme.